What's up, my people? It is your boy Spaces, man. And today we back with another video. And today what we are talking about is workflow in Bitwig. It is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while uh, and how I use it and how it's beneficial and if it makes sense to you that you could use it the exact same way. So let's jump into this right now. Now, what we're going to start at is defining workflow, and I'll tell you why that's important. Uh, workflow meaning a process through which a piece of work passes from initiation to completion. And why that is so important is because this workflow thing comes down to what's comfortable for you. Now, this is what comfortable for me looks like, so I don't want anybody saying that this guy is trying to tell people how to do their workflow. I'm just simply saying that this works for me. Now, number one thing that I would say do is start with templates. That is one of the most important things I can tell you is to start with templates. Create the instruments that you know you're going to use each and every time you connect your computer connect your session you know there's a couple things that you're going to use regardless and you have those now that does not mean stay with those that means that this is where you start you know as soon as i open up the computer open up your session this is where i'm going to start these instruments are instruments that i'm going to use on a regular basis templates people templates now also you have to find a doll that works for you i did uh asset pro back in the day i went from that to machine i went from machine to studio one i'm sorry i went from machine to reasons then reasons to studio one and then studio one i added machine with that and now i'm at bitwig so over time it is it has evolved uh since i have been doing production myself so you have to find the doll that works for what you wanted to work for this particular dog kind of took me by surprise um i've tried to do ableton for a while but it just never worked out but i kind of dug into bitwig bitwig and ableton is kind of the same in a sense but bitwig gave me a few different options that i just had to have i love being able to create shortcuts ableton didn't have keyboard shortcuts that i can create on my own and so that was almost a determining factor, but there's a couple more things, but this is new uh, for me. This is more like sequencing music together and it just kind of opened up a whole new world for me. And so what we'll do is we'll kind of look at this and just kind of see how it all goes. All right, and so if we look at this screen here, now this is my big wig session that I have set up. Now, what I like to do is I like to create these colors that's on here. This is where I do all of my sequencing. This is where I generate my ideas. Um, I like to play around with different things to just kind of get different feels, change up some patterns, change up some bass lines, change up some drums, different things like that. So what I like to do in this sense is, let's say I want to take this, then I'm just going to command R and it'll let me change it. I like to call this the full beat, right? And then I'll save that. Same thing here. This is my full beat two. So this is separate. These two are separate. One of them is the full one. The other one is like part B, so to say. And then so on and so forth. Now, from this, what I like to do is I like to hear what different things sound like. And then I try to identify where my chorus is or my vocal. I mean, my uh, verses are where the breakdowns are, what sounds good in those different areas. So what this does is give me an idea of how many ways that I can break this down before I come to a final decision. And I want to show you a couple of things that I do with this. So um, one major thing that I like to do is, is this. I'm going to just play this. This is the, I'm going to play the full beat one, and then I'm going to play the full beat two, and then I'm going to show you something that I like to do in these kind of situations.
one main thing that I like to do in these situations is, is that uh, like that part B could be an area where I wanted to go back to the part A. And so in order for me to see what that sound like, I want to generate that idea here and then allow that to happen. And then if it fits, then I can go ahead and keep it the idea of it. If it does not, then I'll know I can try something different. So I'll show you how I do that. What I'm going to do here is that I want to be able to have this part B to go back to the part one to give me an idea. So I don't want to do anything with part one, but part B, I know once it's done, I want it to go back to part one. So I'm going to click here on the part B here and I'm going to go over here. This is the next action. So I know this thing here is four bars, right? So what I'm going to do is after four bars, I wanted to go to the first clip, right? And so now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to play the second clip and then you'll see it go back to the first clip. Right. So you'll notice that the clips over here will start blinking, which will indicate as soon as this is done, it's going to go here. This gives me an idea. Every time I'm playing around with these, when I hear that that second one, it'll always go back to part one. Right. So now also what I want to show you is, is this. So on here, as I say, these are color coded here. Now I have the push mini at this particular setup and so on my push is color coded the exact way that it shows on here and I can go and I can kind of like switch through the different scenes on it now what you'll notice is that on these different options here I get a chance to see what all of these different things sound like um, and so I'm gonna just kind of play them so you can get the different ideas Right. So now I have these different ideas that I have set up. I get kind of a feel of what I want to do. As you notice, the baseline changes. Uh, the drum pattern kind of stays the same, but there is a loop that I created in loop mix that's kind of playing underneath those drums. And you can tell when it go out what it would sound like if it if it was not there. And then I used it on others where it de where it is there and you get a chance to hear what that sound like, too. So, like I said, you could just kind of play around with this to just kind of get some ideas. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the next step in this, which is adding these in song structure. So I'm now I'm going to create a track with this. Right. So now what I want to do is that I want to click this little piece here. I know that this here, I'm going to go ahead and create a instant cue here. And I know this is going to be my intro. I got to type it in first. Uh, intro. So how do I want my intro to sound? Now playing this over here, I know that I want this loop here. So I'm just going to say this one here. I'm going to drag this over. I'm just going to play this. Now, I got to make sure that I hit this little piece right here just to activate this area. So, I'm going to play this now and see what it sounds like. Now, I know that I probably do not want that as my intro. So, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to take this out and just kind of see what it sounds like with this.
right? So what I'm going to do is I just want to drag this little piece in. It's the drum here. Now that I have the drum here, I can kind of make this however I want to make this. So I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit. Like I say, I'm just getting some ideas now. Uh, I'll go ahead and bring this in here. Let's see. So what I want to do is I want that first part to play by itself and then I'm going to have this part come in. Right. And so now from here, what I can do is go ahead and start adding some different fields here for this particular track. So I think I'm going to start with this and we'll just kind of name this. I like to name this part one. I don't like to put it as verse or chorus or anything at that right now anyway. So I just say part one. So now. And so now I know I have my first part here. So now it's really just like connecting the dots at this point, finding out what fits, how do you want to take away, how do you want to add to it and different things like that. So I'm going to just continue to go and just kind of fill this thing in to see if we can come up with the actual track that we'll just kind of go with for demonstration purposes, right? All right, so let's go here. So we're going to keep going. I think maybe I will add like um, this part here after the fact. Let's see what this sounds like coming out of here. Right. So um, the transition is cool. Not really just soul on the transition just yet, but um, we we'll just keep going here with this part here. And I think what I'll do is is take the baby part out. Maybe add this part here into it. And then bring the loop back in. And then what we'll do is do that little part here where we'll do like a first part, second part, third part, something like that. I don't know. So now I notice I don't want that in there. I don't want that in there. And then in order for this to have some kind of an impact, we'll bring that back there. Same thing for this. Let's see. Hey, so now we got some flowing. Now, I just want you to know in real life, in real time, I probably wouldn't do this particular arrangement, but I'm just showing you how it all works. So uh, just, you know, <laughs> just know that this is probably not how I would do this by no means. I'm just giving the example. All right. So now what I want to do is that now I'm just going to show you how from here you can add your risers and all of that stuff like i said this area here is just for 
the idea. This is a brainstorming area. This is where you bring everything together. You can add all of the things that you want to add, take away the things you want to take away. I know I've said that a million times, but I just want to bring that point home like you can change the stuff around once you get it in here. Once you've generated the idea, you've already kind of played around with it to see what it would sound like. And so now what we're going to do next in here is we're going to go ahead and start uh, doing a little mix in here. Let's see here. Now, normally what I would do is take the the highest part, which would probably be here. And... Just stretch it out and I want it to just kind of loop itself. So let's see here. And so now um, you can go ahead and just kind of start adding your effects and different things like that. You have your send over here where you can send some effects to. You have your master over here. You can add your master chain to this part here. And like I say, you just hit plus and just add whatever you need to add here. And once you add that, then you create the entire track. Now, I want to show you this because in Bitwig, um, it took me a while to figure this out and how to actually do this as far as bouncing this track down. And so now what I'm going to do here is I realize my measure is, let's just say hypothetically, my measure is 35. So I'm going to come here to file. I'm going to do an export and then I'm going to make sure this starts at one and I'm going to take this up to 35. I have my MP3. I can set a wave. I can do all kind of different things here. Now, if I wanted to track this out individually, I would click here and I would shift and hold all the way down and then do the waves and it would actually create this and ship out the waves in, I mean, the uh, tracks individually to where you can send it and get, send it off to get mastered or anything like that and um, get your track finished, man. And so there we have it, man. I just wanted to show you this workflow. Um, I know people have asked me about what I thought about Bitwig. And uh, man, I love Bitwig, man. It is, uh, it is definitely kind of branching me out when it comes down to uh, production, putting different things together. Like I said, I create those templates. When I pull it up, I don't have to think about certain items because they are already on here. I can get started, which is the most important part is just getting started with your track. And once you get started, man, you on and going. You on and going. So, man, I hope that this video was really good for you guys, I, uh, especially if you're thinking about Bitwig. You got a chance to see it. Um, there's not a lot of us. Um, I, 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 don't, I haven't seen a lot of like hip hop producers or the like urban style music that creates music in Bitwig. So I don't know. I don't know how many of us are out there. Uh, a lot of the guys that I've seen do it had their like synthesizer pop, stuff like that. But you know, this is a new field. This is a new field and I'm loving it. And um, hope to continue making it, man. And before we go, make sure that you go check out the merch. We got merch, man. I'm creating another one. I cannot wait to put it out. It's coming. But other than that, man, until the next video, man, peace out.